Hey everyone, welcome to the Healthy Living with Hoot podcast, where we will bring you some of the most incredible guests and content anywhere. We hope by the end of the show that you feel like you've been inspired, motivated, and that we've added value to your life so that you can be the best version of yourself. So whether you're cooking, cleaning, exercising, or driving, let's do this together in the Healthy Living with Hoot podcast. We're so honored to be joined by alternative and holistic health expert, Josh Kennedy, for our first ever episode of Healthy Living with Hoot. You can find him online on Instagram at the chronic pain guy and at power through motion and on Clubhouse in the Chronic Pain Clinic Club. But man, welcome to the first ever episode of Healthy Living with Hoot. So honored that you're here joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me. So how did you know that you wanted to make, you know, this your life's work and, and tell everyone a little bit about what you do? Because between you and Dr. Russ, I'll tell you, man, it's uh, it's been fascinating. I could listen for hours to you guys. It's been an interesting ride, I, I do have to say. Uh, when I was younger, I was always into sports and I got injured a lot. Uh, I went and hurt, no, I like herniated my disc. I've not tore my rotator cuff in my left shoulder, separated my rot- uh, rotator cuff in my right. I've torn my quad. I, oh my God. Like, uh, you got like, a lot of emotional of- trauma growing up there. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like tons of concussions from football and rugby oh, and all that types of stuff. And like, Tons of ankle injuries and broken fingers and broken nose and like yeah you've named it uh, named it I've like I've always had this type of caring uh, nature about helping people and I went to school for personal training because I couldn't become a physical therapist I then kind of grew from that and was a trainer for ten years got certified uh, uh, and licensed in fascial stretch therapy and then that opened doors for me and I found the industry to be a little bit in this type of flawed state so. That's where I wanted to try and make a change. And that's where I started building my my whole system and everything else around. Yeah. So tell everybody about your about your system and, and how it's evolved. It's fascinating. So fascial stretch therapy um, is all about stretching the fascia. And the fascia itself is the connective tissue throughout our entire body. It runs around every muscle. It connects our skin to our uh, to our muscle as well, but it also runs in between every muscle fiber. And it connects from our feet to our head. So it's now us understanding exactly how can we improve upon uh, that function so that we can get the fascia and the muscle and the tissue and the joints and all the connective tissue to start working as one so that we can see the elongation and reduction of tension throughout the body. Awesome. But I found is that stretching alone is can be limited. Wow. So, so if I, as, if somebody comes in and they're skeptical and they're like, do you take into consideration an x-ray and an MRI? Like, you know, what do you, what do you do when you first consult somebody if they come into your practice for the first time? So it usually ends up being is that I get them in for initial assessment. So the initial assessment's usually 90 minutes long. Uh, we go into detail. We look at how like their big toe moves. We see how the, not like, how their vertebrae and each vertebrae is going and rotating and flexing with not which ones are not going and moving correctly. Then we need to go and look at like the neck, the shoulders, the back, upper back, hips, see how they walk, see how they squat, see which muscles are moving, which ones are not. And really kind of diving deep into the true specifics because I I'm all about going into the nitty gritty. Once we can go and start understanding what's firing, what's not firing, And I'm a big believer in compensations. So this is a comprehensive exam that you're trying Mm -hmm. to determine uh, what is what it is and what is actually not what it appears to be. And and then people will shade colors in if there's pain spots or let you know if there's areas of concern. Yeah, you know, they go and they circle, I have a body on there, and then they usually circle the areas to go and identify the specific areas that they're, uh, that they're work- needing, that their pain is. Right. But the pain of the area is Isn't only that- a symptom. Right. It is not the cause. And then is there um, any emotional components to the initial assessment where you're taking into consideration any traumas or... Uh, any wounds from their past that they share with you that you know specifically have to do with a lack of emotional support 
in their life, which could result in back pain or things of that nature. So how does that, you know, figure into your practice? So uh, definitely at the start, after they finish the questionnaire, I go and I actually give them a bunch of questions as well, just trying to go and dive deeper into some specifics of anything else. And then even after that, if I'm just seeing how the body is reacting to the assessment and how the, you know, the person is reacting to the assessment, it will also give me questions and, uh, and getting me to start being able to ask more uh, and get more answers out of that. Because like in, uh, in one scenario, I had one client. And she ended up going and saying that she always crossed her legs. Whenever she stood, she always crossed her legs over. And in doing so, it put all the pressure onto the one leg, which was her main uh, driver for causing her, her lower back pain. But later, what I ended up going and noticing is just like how much she was resisting me for any time I was just trying to go and move her hips and move her legs and get not and get into that order. And it just showed me as well that I was like, okay, I'm just going to go and ask you something. Or did you ever have any types of trauma? And I certain I just put my hand kind of just hovering over and just in a big circle. I'm like, did you have trauma in this very specific area? And then she's like, yes, I did. Mm. And she didn't want to tell me at the, not at the beginning of the questionnaire. And she wanted to just try and go and hide it because she just is trying to suppress it and not really ever think about it or talk about it or anything else. But it just goes and shows us like on how much trauma, physical, mental, uh, can really be correlated with the types of pain that we're going and having. And if we're just going to go and try and stuff it down, then we're actually going and having these types of problems arise in many other ways, whether that be through chronic disease, chronic pain, uh, or any other types of like autoimmune diseases as well. So Man, that's uh, fascinating. And, and I think a lot of people, you know, they're skeptical, you know, because we're so reliant on, like I said earlier, an x-ray or an MRI. And so they, they come in, do you have, <clears throat> this is a great story that you just shared. Is there, is there another person that came in that they were like, all right, I'll try it, but they were so skeptical. And then now they've been coming to you for a while and now they swear by you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot actually a lot. there's a lot a lot of a lot of the people because the people that usually come work with me are the people that end up going to see physio chiro or massage last resort and, and i'm in the last resort right they've been to everyone else and nothing's really worked educating the client is tremendous instead of just going and just telling the person oh you have this you have this you have this uh, when I'm going and breaking things down, I'm taking photos, I'm taking videos of their posture, of their walk, and then I break it down for them. I show it to them right then and there and just be like, I'm going and looking at this. I'm seeing this. You're going and leaning to this one side. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. This is why you have so much tension and so much pain on your right leg. But what about sleep? A uh, sleep posture is always big, is always a big, big component as well. But we also need to go and take into consideration what could be going and correlating with the dysfunction of sleep posture. So whether that be having too much stress in their life, mm -hmm. that could be getting correlated with creating too much tension in their neck and too much tension in their jaw. But then, and then that's why they're going and maybe clenching their jaw at night or they sleep on their stomach. Mm -hmm. Then they end up going and uh, like hurting their head too much, but because of the tension in their neck, that's correlated with the amount of stress that they have in their life is wow. then going and causing jaw problems, causing neck problems, causing upper back, shoulders, whatever else. Yes. Sleep posture is not, is a big component, but it's, it's not sometimes always the primary, pri uh, that primary pattern that's, uh, that's causing all of these issues to occur. Man, that is fascinating stuff. So, so now we've determined, you know, what's going on as much as we can initially in this 90 minute consultation. Mm -hmm. And so now it's time to, time to get to work. But we need to go and start looking at fixing pain as less of just an instant relief as more of a, not as a full lifestyle change, because mm -hmm. we need to start looking at therapy as more of a lifestyle, less as a 
not just a quick fix type of thing. Oh, I have lower back pain. Okay. Or if we sit and we're leaning more to one side uh, and we're mm-hmm. like, okay, I feel more comfortable leaning to my right side. I go on, I lean when I work, I lean to my right and then I type with my left or I lean to my left and I use the mouse with my right. And that's just how I sit all the time. Okay. I'm moving so my mouse. I'm moving my mouse to the left side now, since I've had it over here for a year and a half. <laughs> wow this is really uncomfortable doc <laughs> oh wow i feel better already god damn all i had to do was put the mouse on the other side of the desk god who knew okay go ahead oh, sorry about that man no Jesus. problem <laughs> but no but so that's how we need to go and start looking at it is what is happening with all of that pain so Move your mouse ladies and gentlemen Move, move I wouldn't your say mouse. move your. Mo- <laughs> I wouldn't say move your mouse. I would just go and say, uh, let's start shifting our weight to a different position uh, on that. But when we do end up going and leaning more to that one side, we end up having a tendency to do that because now our pelvis is also twisted. So we have to almost realign and get the pelvis in this scenario, get the pelvis back into its original position. So let me ask you this, because I'm so interested in sports. And so your background, obviously, personally and professionally. Uh, so mm-hmm. what, what have you know? I'm sure you have athletes that come to you as well. And so yeah. what, what have you noticed uh, either with regards to in particular, like um, I'm interested in ACLs because women have a four to six times higher incidence of ACL tears uh, and then when they're on their periods, it, the incidence is even higher. So in, in situations like this, um, you know, obviously the, the, the ratio between the hip and the knees are different with women, you know, so like that would be one thing, obviously, um, you would take into consideration. But, but what are some things that you've recommended, you know, to young athletes and, and women in particular, young girls that they could do to reduce the risk of injury from a preventative standpoint? Well, we need to go and start looking at it as also the no, the hamstring strength, because uh, with the hamstring strength it's, uh, itself, uh, the uh, the hamstring is a lot shorter within a female than it is in a male. So that's that's one of the biggest uh, factors on one of the reasons why uh, women have a higher tendency of mm-hmm. an ACL injury compared to a male. But also even just making sure that the we're not overusing uh, the quad. But also the one thing as well that we don't end up doing is working through all ranges. Sport puts us into many different types of positions than we ever would in real life. Right. It's an area that they were weak in. It's not the area that they were strong in. And so the more range we can get, the more function we can get, the more strength. And we need to go and look at it in that very specific way so that we can create a strong and healthy knee. So it's now us identifying those specifics so that they can create strength and power through all of the muscles to not to produce the most amount of output. Man, that's fascinating. Do professional teams across the board have someone like you that works with the strength and conditioning coaches that make sure that they're taking these things into consideration? Or is this, is this where there is uh, a disconnect regarding uh, professional athletes and, and maybe at the collegiate level with power five conferences that have the resources financially, but is this something that's missing in your opinion that could reduce injuries? I not in my opinion. Yes. And you go and you look at LeBron James guy barely has ever had any types of injuries in his, uh, in his entire career, but he has a one-on-one uh, trainer, uh, Mike Mancena that goes and breaks everything down. Just like I, uh, like how I do, he looks at his big toe. He looks at how, like he's functioning, how, how good of a, uh, like function of his joints and of his muscles and of his hamstrings and everything else, seeing how everything is really getting correlated uh, with the rest of his body. And that's the same thing as Tom Brady. Tom Brady has his trainer and they created a whole system around that as well. And this is how we need to go and look at injury to like get it completely gone. But I find in team sports, this is where it's definitely limited Mm -hmm. and we don't see this type of uh, like in depth. So it's, it's a long process getting themselves back to feeling healthy again. And and that, and you know how many times I've reached for the mouse on the right side, like at least six times since you, since since you've been uh, sharing with us that we need to put the mouse on the other side of the desk. 
But no, oh, I just want to make. <laughs> we got, I never told you to put the mouse on the other side. That's right. Let's clear. <laughs> let's make sure we're clear on that. But 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 to your point though, and and that that's if the six months to a year they got the correct treatment, because then they're putting themselves at risk that they're only treating the symptoms and not the actual problem. That's fascinating stuff. So let me ask you this: How much do you take into consideration uh, uh, diet and supplementation? Yeah, it's a huge component. We need to be going and drinking a ton of water to make sure that our uh, that our muscles are hydrated, that the tissue is hydrated, that the fascia is hydrated. On top of it, if we're malnutrition, then the nervous system and the brain can't function correctly. The spinal cord uh, can't send the proper signaling. The brain can't send the proper signaling to the muscles, to the joints, and everything else as well. So, so do you work in conjunction with like a nutritionist, or do you have them do a food diary? Like what what is part of that initial consultation? I'm a big believer in, uh, in making sure that they do have the proper nutrition, but it, it also comes down to is that if they're willing to. So I have uh, like some friends that I've actually met through Clubhouse as well that uh, are very good at nutrition or even functional medicine as well. So mm-hmm. I have all of those as uh, to go and refer people to, to get people the proper treatment that they need. But if they're not willing to go and put the, that effort right. into it, then Absolutely. You know, I only can go and work with what they're willing to go and do. So the, but, and the same is true for not only their diets, but supplementation and just educate, really empowering people to be better educated on how important diet, mm-hmm. you know, exercise, obviously, and supplementation is to, you know, reshaping, you know, uh, no pun intended, you know, their bodies and their minds and, you know, so many holistic comprehensive components to you know people being the best versions of themselves because they just can if they're not you know taking into consideration and making adjustments in all these areas then like we talked about several times they're just sort of putting a band-aid over things yeah yeah 100 percent. i'm gonna ask you a few rapid fire questions and then i'll leave the floor for you to uh share anything else that you want to share where people can find you and and any of that good stuff Okay, so uh, I think I don't know if I shared this with you, but I I started doing uh, lemon juice eight months ago, and mm-hmm. uh, it's been a part of the other things that I've done that helped me lose twenty pounds and made me stronger, more energetic. And then I've been doing celery juice for a year and a half for gut health because I have Crohn's, and Crohn's in large part was probably because of my childhood trauma, uh, and that's why I've been asymptomatic for twenty six years for the most part because I've gotten in touch with a lot of those emotional things. Anyways, that being said, lemon or celery juice? <laughs> um, lemon, I would say lemon juice. Wow. Basically, I can't do lemon because I'm actually uh, highly um, uh, sensitive to it. So I can't go and drink it. It actually causes a lot of gut problems for me. Interesting. So I can't, not, I can't have that, but I do know uh, the effects of what it can go and give, even though that uh, lemon is acidic, it actually goes and causes water and uh, and affects our body in more of an alkaline way. And with us going and having so much acidity within our body on a regular basis, uh, putting ourselves back into alkaline is is a big, big component. Boy, if that's not an example of we are all so different and one thing can react completely different from one person to another, uh, everyone, you know, take note of that because that's as important as anything that we've talked about today and why it's so important that you document, you know, what you're eating, your stress levels and how everything impacts you emotionally, physically, you know, and regarding your diet, because, uh, what works for you doesn't necessarily work for me. Okay. Uh, an omelet or an acai bowl for breakfast. Wow. What kind? Two eggs, a couple egg whites, uh, red peppers, onions, getting myself into, all that maybe no, I I do enjoy my uh, spinach as well in it. See, I knew there was going to be vegetables in there, and I you were so predictable with the egg whites. The egg. <laughs> okay, uh, burger or Chinese food for dinner? Burger. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Wait, what kind of burger? Could be a vegan. Oh no! Give me like a banquet with like bacon, cheese. Oh, there uh, we go. Yeah. Everything you, you can take the athlete out of the whatever that phrase is, but you can't take the 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 burger out of the athlete, right, or something like that. Okay, wait. So Greek salad or soup for lunch? Soup. I enjoy soup. Beef stew. I also do enjoy with lots of vegetables and anything else. 
Yeah. He's a closet steak and potatoes person, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, hey, so golf or tennis? Golf. Wow. He answered that very quickly. And I just got my son a golf set for his birthday last year. So he's wanting to start playing golf with me more as well. So. Oh, that's exciting. So you're a hard rock kind of guy. Uh, yeah. Give me some, you know, good Led Zeppelin, right. uh, Rush, all that type <laughs> of stuff. Yeah. I love it. Man, we knew, we, knew, we knew that right from the jump. Okay, wait. So, uh, pen or pencil? Wow, really? Interesting. Yeah. Chiropractic or acupuncture? Chiropractic. Mm. Pilates or lifting yeah. weights? Lifting weights. See, these are not surprising answers. Ladies. Yoga or meditating? Um, meditating. Wow. That's surprising. That one I would not have expected. Definitely during the summer. Like, my, my favorite place is heading up north in uh, northern Ontario. Mm. and being up there uh, in in the wilderness there and being up by the lakes being up by the water and everything else just hearing and just absorbing everything it's like my favorite place that's awesome so is your practice covered under under the way that canada insurance works like people are allowed to come yeah. and it wow interesting yeah so yeah so it is covered under massage therapy oh wow well, so. that's cool yeah and now who's your favorite football player of all time ray lewis wow so you like to hit rather than than be hit. <laughs> I was always I was a defensive end and a linebacker. That's what I played in football. So wow, that's awesome. Well, any anything else you want to share with uh, everyone, man? It's been truly an honor to to have you as my first guest on Healthy Living with Hoot. Uh, learned so much, not only about mouses, but uh, about the human body. Uh, and- oh, I absolutely love today. It was no, it was fantastic. Um, but yeah, like. If any of you guys want to go and know a little bit more about what I do, you can always go and go to my website at powerthroughmotion.com uh, and reach out to me that way. And also, I'll go uh, and give 30 minute uh, free consultations as well. Uh, so, if you're wanting to go and hop on a Zoom call with me for us to go and dive deeper into the specific needs of what exactly is going on with you, you can just go and head to my website, book a call. I do work with people in person. At, uh, like at my clinic, but also I go and work with people online uh, all over the world. Oh, wow. Work with people from Germany to the uh, United States to uh, Ireland, Scotland, uh, kind of everywhere. Fascinating. How are things going there with COVID? I know you guys had some very, very strict stipulations going on between Canada and Australia. I was like, wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's lightened up. And then if you could have any, let's say two people, at your what's your favorite meal of those meals that i mentioned breakfast uh yeah breakfast breakfast is my favorite so if you could have if you could have any two people at your breakfast table past or present dead or alive that you've never met in your life who would you want at your breakfast table uh that's a that's a good question uh one guy that i would love to go and meet but he is dead is mel sif so he's the guy who wrote the book uh super training super training is like the the Bible of like strength and conditioning. Who would be your first uh, athlete at the table? Ray well, Lewis. <laughs> Ray Lewis. <laughs> Who'd be your second athlete at the table? <laughs> um, that would probably be Michael Jordan. And then what's the best part about being a dad? I'm getting woken up every morning with the kids coming in and just giving me a big hug. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If that doesn't get your day started off on the right foot, no pun intended, or the left foot, uh, depending on <laughs> where you're compensating. I don't know what does. Uh, Josh Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen, uh, man, fascinating conversation. I genuinely appreciate you being the first guest ever on Healthy Living with Hoot. Continued success, and I'm sure I'll see you around on Clubhouse. And uh, everyone tap in to him and check him out on his website. And, uh, you know, he's on Clubhouse. I also go and run one room each week at Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Club is called the Chronic Pain Clinic. In that room, I say it all the time: is that the life that you truly deserve to be pain free. Do you do you finish your sentences a lot with a? No, that's not a thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on where you are in Canada, Ontario. We're pretty much we don't really say that. You might as well be uh, in Detroit. People, some people do, right? Some people do, but it's more uh, if you look at the West Coast or the East Coast, they do say it more often. Take advantage of that free thirty minute consultation. I uh, never know. Maybe I will. Okay. All right. Have a great day, yeah. man. I'm going to go walk the dog. Thanks. You too. All right. Much love. All bro. right. All right. Talk to you soon. Take All care. Right. Have Bye-bye. a good day. All right. Bye. Remember, you can always send us an email to healthylivingwithhoot at gmail.com 
And you can always check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Mike Hootner. And take care of yourselves, everyone, literally. And remember, it's never too late to start. Thanks for joining us again right here in the Healthy Living with Hoot podcast. Much love, everybody. Peace.